Good afternoon and welcome to the Tuesday Times Roundtable, where each week we engage in conversation and cur uh, around current global issues, trends, problems, and opportunities that are of interest to you. Our weekly Tuesday Times Roundtable is made possible through a formal partnership with the New York Times. This partnership also brings a New York Times guest speaker to FIU annually. And you're gonna wanna stick around till we're all done today so you can hear some more about that. The partnership also provides you, FIU students, faculty, and staff with free digital access to the New York Times newspaper. I'm Sherry Beeson, your host and senior program coordinator for the Office of Global Learning Initiatives. Behind the scenes, but never far away, is Taylor Signs, our communications guru, who sends you announcements regarding all things global and your Global Learning Medallion newsletter, The Globe. Now I would like to introduce you to our guest host for the day, Yenis Lady Simone Mengana, otherwise known as Yenny, and our Global Learning Medallion Program Manager. In this role, Yenny leads the development, implementation, and evaluation of program pre students' global awareness, global perspective, and global engagement. Her experience includes working nationally and internationally in the areas of education, international development, humanitarianism, gender advocacy, and global engagement. Yenny holds a bachelor's degree in psychology from Smith College and a master's degree in higher education administration from right here, our very own FIU. She is both a Salzburg Global Seminar alumna and a Humanity in Action Fellow. Yenny is also the founder of Seven Sisters Latina Conference and a three-time Public Leadership Education Network alumna. Most recently, she joined as a teaching faculty member of the Global Citizenship Alliance. Yeti, take it away. Thank you so much, Sherry. That's very kind of you. Um, hi, everyone. Yes, I'm Yeni Simon. I um, know so many of you here today, which is so exciting. I was seeing and as all of you were joining. Um, and yeah, it is my pleasure to work at FIU um, hopefully helping all of you understand your role in the world and what kind of contributions you want to make and how you can you can help us create a better future for all of us. So today I want to remind you really quickly of two things that we have coming up from our office before we delve into the topic that we have prepared for you. First, our uh, 2021 transformation contest is open. We invite you to share an international or intercultural experience um, via any artistic or information media. You can submit your pieces, your essays, your songs, your podcast, whatever you create. And then you have a chance to win a trip to Washington DC, fully funded. We did a, uh, we've been doing this for a couple of years now, last year we had a virtual um, trip to DC. It was super fun. You can read about it in, in FIU news. And so we really want to, to hear about your experiences and hopefully um, invite you to have another transformational experience if you get selected for the DC flying, as we call it. Um, and also, I want to remind everyone that next Tuesday, we're not meeting here at 12.30 as usual because we're having our annual guest speaker come. Uh, he's a New York Times reporter, Christopher Flavel, and he's going to be talking about Miami on the front lines of climate change, a topic that we should all be interested in and concerned about, and he has done... Um, really a lot of work in this area looking at Miami and the role we play within the larger uh, field of, of climate change and climate action and climate justice. And so I'm inviting you all to join us for Global Learning Medallion students. This is a two-point opportunity, so I, I recommend you uh, that you join us at 3.30 p.m. next Tuesday. Um, and now 
this is uh, what you've been waiting for is the Millennium Fellowship um, Tuesday Times Roundtable to talk about fostering international collaboration for the Sustainable Development Goals. I want to first really quickly talk to you about the Millennium Fellowship for those of you who are not familiar with this program. It's a semester long program that um, convenes and challenges and celebrates global student leadership on campuses around the world. It is hosted by the Millennium um, Campus Network and the United Nations Academic Impact. And really what it is doing is preparing the next generation of leaders that are going to be tackling the most pressing issues impacting our world. Um, FIU has been a Millennium Fellowship campus for two years now. So we had our first cohort in 2019, uh, our second cohort in 2020, and now applications are open for the 2021 cohort. We're super excited that hopefully after this conversation, some of you would uh, want to apply and I'll be here as well to support you throughout the application process. Um, I know the fellows are gonna be talking a little bit more in detail about their projects and what the fellowship entails. But just so you know, these are the sustainable development goals and your project should be addressing one or more of those. Um, the interesting component is you will be doing that. You can do that at the local level because the fellowship really emphasizes that relationship between local change and global impact. Uh, and so don't think that you have to tackle something that's happening elsewhere. There are issues probably in your community that you could be making um, contributions to. Um, and so with that said, I'm gonna introduce the guest speakers today. So first I want to introduce Melanie Rodriguez. Melanie is a student at Florida International University uh, studying exceptional student education. Um, she is passionate about enacting social change by combining her passion for the arts with her dedication to activism, education, and social justice. And Melanie is also a Global Learning Medallion student. Uh, we also have Andrea Lovera. Andrea uh, is studying finance at FIU. After graduation, she plans to go to law school to become a corporate lawyer. Uh, Andrea's long term is to help develop corporations for future economic growth and job opportunities for generations to come. Hi, Andrea. Welcome. Uh, next, we have Carla Alfaro Gutierrez from Universidad de Monterrey in Mexico. Carla is uh, a student who's passionate about advocating for gender equality, feminism, and access to quality education for girls and women. Thank you, Carla, for joining us today. Uh, next, we have Alejandra Macias Ruiz, also from Universidad de Monterrey in Mexico, and she is um, studying psychology. She is passionate about human rights and mental health, especially in how they intersect with gender equality. Now I want to introduce you to Bismarck Dabu from University for Development Studies in Ghana. Bismarck is a biochemistry student of, the university, of this university I mentioned in Ghana, and he's focused on matters relating to health um, research problems and a key interest in upcoming innovations to prevent and combat diseases. And last but not least, I have the pleasure of introducing to you Michelle Lunanga uh, from the United States International University, Africa in Kenya. He is an international business administration student and, um, and he is also a photographer an activist, a traveler, a cinematographer, and a motivational speaker advocating for social justice and youth empowerment. Thank you so much to all of you for uh, joining us today. We're so excited to have you here. And now I'm gonna turn it over uh, to our moderator for this conversation, Melanie Rodriguez. Melanie, you can, you can go ahead. 
Hi, everyone. So we're going to get started, you know, by just having some fun and trying to learn a little bit more about the fellowship to give some context to the conversation that we'll have. So if you can, um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen so that you can see the game pin. If you can log in to Kahoot.it um, and put in that game pin. And once, you know, we take like two minutes to do that and everyone's in, we'll go ahead and it's a short little game um, with some basic questions that will hopefully give you some insight about the fellowship. I see some of my Millennium Fellow cohorts logging into the game, so I'm really hoping you all get these questions right. I got you, Melanie. I got you. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and start the game and you can join throughout. So no worries if you haven't had a chance to get in yet. Um, but here we go. So our first question is true or false. The Millennium Fellowship is only available for campuses in the United States. Amazing. So as you can see, the reason we're here today is because it is available internationally. It's open to campuses across the world. Okay, Destiny, there we go. What percentage of campuses worldwide were selected to host the Millennium Fellowship? So 6% of campuses worldwide were selected. So we're gonna talk a little bit more about that later on in the session, but this uh, Millennium Fellowship class was over a thousand fellows, but um, that was only 6% of everyone who applied. Estella, okay, my Millennium Fellowship cohort is doing me right. So what are the core values of the Millennium Fellowship? Leadership. So it is a leadership development program. However, it's made up of three core values. So empathy, humility, and inclusion make up this practice of leadership that the Millennium Fellowship teaches us. Prachi, okay. <laughs> True or false, if you're a campus director, you do not complete the same curriculum as your cohort. False. So correct, that is false. Um, so Carla and I will talk a little bit more about this later, but as campus directors, we lead our own projects while also facilitating curriculum um, for the other fellows.
And then our last question, are the applications for the class of 2021 open? And that is true. So that's one of the reasons we're here today, encouraging you all to apply and to come up with your own projects. And we'll talk a little bit more about how to do that. So let's see who knew their fellowship. Congratulations, Sandy, third place. Brianna, second. Okay, Brianna, you did make me proud. Thank you. <laughs> and then Prachi. Okay, so we had two of our fellows on there. So clearly they, you know, they learned their stuff. Um, so thank you all for participating. Hopefully that gave you a little bit of a better idea of what the fellowship entails um, and what you'll be signing up for if you do decide to apply. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and get started um, into our actual Q&A portion with our guests. So the first thing we're going to talk about is, you know, tell us a little bit about yourself and your project um, and, you know, what sustainable development goal you were addressing. So I'll start off for mine. Um, like I said, I was one of the campus directors at Florida International University for the class of 2020. However, I was also a fellow um, for the class of 2019. So I've done this twice now, um, which has been a great experience. Um, and my project kind of developed over time. So what my project currently is, is called Let Your Voices Echo or Project Live, um, which basically addresses is the issues of social justice through the arts and through the concept of artivism, which is combining arts for advocacy. Um, so we've hosted film screenings, we've hosted workshops, um, discussions, and open mics where people can come together to talk about these social justice issues, um, but also engage with the arts in a new way. And so we've been able to, through with this project to collaborate with partners such as the Office of Global Learning, um, but also offices like, you know, the FIU Honors College, where we were able to participate in Honors Both Speak and kind of combine, you know, very present and real issues um, with this, these ideas and these concepts that we've been talking about. And next we'll hear from Andrea. Hello, everyone. My name is Andrea Loera. And my project is called Clean Hands in the Garden, which addresses SDG number three, which is health and well-being. Um, its focus is to educate individuals about the benefit of growing antiseptic plants in underdeveloped countries to prevent a variety of diseases, such as diarrheal disease, which is the disease that I focused on. And I found out throughout my research process that antiseptic plants are actually able to grow in every climate. And the most important part is to do your research about what plants work best for the desired location. And yeah, um, my location, my desired location was Porto Novo, but given the pandemic, I actually realized that antiseptic plants are natural sources of soap and they're actually inexpensive. And since they're able to grow in, in any climate, I thought that it was a great idea to expand that not only, it doesn't only work um, in underdeveloped countries, but also worldwide in any place, anytime. Thank you so much, Andrea. And next we're gonna hear from Carla. Hi, so to talk a little bit about my project, uh, it focuses on uh, SG number four and five, which are quality education and gender equality, as we mentioned. And I was interested in creating a platform that allowed young women to share and learn about different, more women-oriented information and mostly share about their experiences and connect with each other and also kind of um, search this, uh, that they feel a part of a project as well. So not only be a platform, but include them in it and as precise actions I took last semester was to offer these dialogue spaces where they could ask uh, questions and yeah, to learn more about what my community, specifically my university um, was lacking in sense of this women oriented information and offer them this place to talk and learn about each other. And yes, so right now I'm focusing more on social media and sharing more about literature, art, health, and activism, and kind of searching to ignite this spark in young women so they, um, they learn more and yes, to, yeah, to share with them more information. Sorry, I'm a bit nervous <laughs> to be here. <laughs> 
but yeah I just wanted to create this space and connect and I'm also working on a blog because that's a passion of mine to offer this space of sharing opinions storytelling interviews and creative writing for now not only women from my university but also women hopefully around the country and hopefully even more around the world so that was my project <laughs> thank you Carla next we'll hear from Alejandra Hi, my name is Alejandro Macias, um, and I'm a fellow from Universidad de Monterrey from Mexico. And my project is basically focused on mental health, gender equality, and education. So it's on the SDG number five and three, that's gender equality and good health and well-being. Um, well, throughout the fellowship, my project um, focus on women in sports and how to apply sports psychology in the with the gender equality. So that's basically what my project's been focusing on um, throughout the work. The sorry, I'm I'm a little bit nervous too. Um, but <laughs> throughout the fellowship, my project um, well, it's meant to be about workshops, conference recommendations, basically all lifting up women and giving them the tools for, well, a good development um, psychologically. And also like in the topics we'll, that the project is talking about in those moments, like I said, uh, last semester it was women in sports. So uh, this semester we are still focused kissing like in women in sports and also some general topics about gender equality. Thank you. And next we'll hear from Bismarck. Thank you very much, you very much for the opportunity. I hope you can hear me. Hello. It's a, it's a little faint, Hello. but um we're trying. Go ahead. Hope you can hear me now. Good. My project is about healthy community where young men and women come together to actually get into research aspect concerning the environment and health issues where we'll bring out findings that will help to improve the health of the communities and to come out with relevant ways of what? Curbing or preventing actual occurrence for happening again. And I'm actually advancing on SDG 1 and SDG 3, which is good health and poverty eradication where we then combine our research into agriculture, health, mm -hmm. and other mm -hmm. industrial aspects. So we are combining both theory and practical, where the findings be out to educate people on how there are actually preventable diseases, which we can easily prevent, but because of lack of knowledge in those diseases, we keep on contracting it day in, day out. And we are actually focusing on diabetes, hepatitis, and other non-communicable diseases. Thank you. Thank you for sharing, Bismarck. And next we'll hear from Michelle. Yes, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so my project is um, Light Through Art. Um, as, as she said, I'm, I'm a photographer and filmmaker. Yeah, so um, I, I went in China to study photography. I, then I came back to empower youth. So my projects encourage and advocate for creative culture and activity in all its forms. So which means uh, we, use, we use art to heal people, as you can as you know, uh, in Congo, people talk about many things like war, especially in the Eastern Congo. So, yeah, so I use art to, to, uh, to give uh, opportunity for people and to heal them and to use uh, 
protection and I mean uh women rights sorry I'm so nervous women's rights and uh gender equality uh disability marginalized groups so we use all those people to we use art to to heal them yeah and we teach also photography to young people and which helps them to to be independent yeah thank you so much everyone um for sharing you know your experiences and your projects and no need to be nervous you know shake off all the nerves we're all nervous every single time we present it's totally fine um this is just you know a conversation where we can all learn you know more about each other and learn about you know all these different issues that you know span so many of our communities across countries and sometimes we don't really realize it um so we're going to turn over into talking a little bit more specifically about that right and about the international collaboration component of the fellowship. Um, so throughout the fellowship, in addition to our weekly meetings with our cohorts, um, we're also required to attend things like global town halls. Um, we're required to attend these conversation hours, um, you know, global webinars that bring in different speakers. And this is really a chance to be able to connect not only with the speakers, but also other fellows, you know, in the chat, everyone's always sharing their contact information and things like that. Um, so we want to talk a little bit about, you know, how were those um, events helpful in, in establishing those connections? And also, how were the informal benefits of the fellowship helpful in establishing those connections? You know, whether it was a Facebook group or a LinkedIn group or just, you know, a text message, like, how did we use, like, this power of technology to be able to come together in a virtual setting and collaborate across countries. So I know personally for myself, my co-campus director, Rikaya, and I had the opportunity um, to moderate one of the global webinars. It was a fantastic experience where we really got to learn not only about the speakers, but we also got to learn so much um, from all the different fellows there, um, asking their questions and all of these kinds of things. And I, for, I know for myself, like, you know, connecting on LinkedIn with all of these amazing projects and on social media with all of these amazing projects, you know, like I follow Carla, I follow Alejandra, like, you know, we would come together. I see Prachi is here, you know, at one of Prachi's events. So you really get to be able to form this network, not only with, you know, your cohort, but also these international cohorts that we start developing little by little. So, you know, that's a little bit about my experience. If anyone wants to jump in and talk about that, speak to their international collaborations, go ahead. Yes, I think it definitely changed my perspective on, you know, meeting people through um, this kind of project because it only had happened to me that I met people on campus or friends of friends, you know, through events. But through the Millennium Fellowship, I was able to reach out to people around the world and to me that was really really crazy or just going through the site and reading about all these other projects and learning about them and you know just be able to reach out and say hey I'm also a fellow should we connect and then maybe plan something or contribute to their project and learn and to you towards yours and that had never happened to me before only through friends as I mentioned so to have this experience it really changed the game for me because now, as Melanie mentioned, it, it, it helps build friendships through the love you have for your projects. And also it builds your own project and expands your impact. So I would say it really did change my perspective and it changed the game for me. So, yeah. <laughs> I think something that is uh impact me a lot was the different ways of working because me as a student in my university only working with people in my university I only had like in mind one way to work so when I got here a really diverse group of people all around the world so I think it was really I don't know like different crazy you have to get used to the way they work they have to get used to the way you work so i think that's i think it's cool like you get like a lot of you learn a lot and also you i don't know like it's really cool to see and learn other ways of working like you don't have to be limited by your thoughts so i think that's another thing that's so amazing that other people seeing you and see um in your project the good things that you are doubting so i think that's really cool and it's a great le learning opportunity uh, 
Amazing. And if, you know, I could hear from specifically Bismarck and Andrea, so you both formed a partnership, um, which I think was super interesting um, to see, you know, so we want to learn a little bit more. Um, were you surprised to see how, you know, people across the country, across the world, like are working on projects very similar to your own? And if so, you know, how did, were you able to establish these partnerships to work on these projects together on completely different sides of the world? Uh, I wasn't surprised, but I was amused to see young leaders coming together to work on similar things I'm doing. Because it is not only a problem in Ghana, it's actually a problem worldwide. So I was actually not surprised, and I was very happy to see others work on the same thing. We couldn't hear you well, I, I think. Do you want to try? Can you hear me now? 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 <laughs> we hear you with like an echo or something. I think when you moved the last time, we could hear you really well. Okay. Can you hear me now? I think I'm too now. I believe there's a glitch in the sound. I guess I'm here now. I'm here now. We, we but it's not very clear. Um, and and then can you share a little bit while Bismarck tries to move the computer different ways to see what, what works? Yes, of course. Um, I was very surprised to see that um, because it, uh, it showed me that we all technically see the world as it is and we all acknowledge the problems and the issues and everything. And I thought that it was very impressive to think that we were all willing to take the initiative and create a social impact together. And I think that the international partnership actually allowed us even allowed us to bond even better and give each other constructive feedback, not only internationally, but also um, on the Tuesday meetings that we had every single, every single Tuesday. And we helped each other to share our knowledge. And sometimes, for example, I would know something more about a topic than this other person. I would help them and just as they would help me. And I thought that um, that would allow the project to be even better for every single person. And with Bismarck, for example, I remember in orientation, um, everyone dropped their LinkedIn accounts and everything. And I was trying to find the group chat for SDG3, which is the sustainable development goal that I was looking for. And that's where I actually got the privilege. I had the privilege to connect with people that share the same ideas and everything that I had. And I thought it was really cool because that's actually where I met Bismarck and we shared the same interests and everything regarding um, the use of, for example, the use of antiseptic plants, which was my project and how he wanted to also prevent and eradicate the variety of diseases. And I thought that it was really cool how we got to even expand more our idea and our project just because of a, um, a program such as the Millennium Fellowship. And I also think that, um, it was, I don't think, if it wasn't for the Millennium Fellowship Program, I don't think we would be able to create the connections that we created throughout time. Thank you. <laughs> Bismarck, do you want to try again? Sure, sure. Can you know? <laughs> you know? We hear you with an echo in the back, right, Sherry? Am I correct? Can you hear me now? Hello? Hello? That sounds better. That sounds better, yeah. Don't move. It's better. <laughs> okay. Yeah, uh, actually, I wasn't surprised to meet other fellows or other young leaders from the different part of the world working on the same as I was Bismarck, can you try can you try turning Hello. off your camera to see if that helps with the connection? 
That might help us get more sound. Now we lost him completely, I think. Uh, we, do you wanna try turning off the camera to see if that helps? Well, this comes with a story of international collaboration, so. Okay, try now. <laughs> it, it's still with an echo it's it's really hard to understand it um you could always put some of your thoughts in the chat yeah. too yes let's do that un until we figure out um until maybe you can find a better reception spot um but i just melanie if, if i may just for a minute and on that question and i'm not i'm not i know i'm not a fellow but i work very closely with them and for the students who are here today as well uh not only uh you have the whatsapp groups and the webinars but the actual website of the fellowship has the coolest database so you can go in and you can click on a university on a region uh, by uh, Sustainable Development Goals, and it will show you all of the fellows working in different countries um, in your own topics. So you can go online and read a description of their projects, and then you can reach out to um, the Millennium uh, Campus Network staff and say, that's how I found some of you. Hey, like this person is doing such really interesting work, and I connect them with one of my fellows doing this work, right? So there's just the whole fellowship is built on a collaborative model that works in several different layers. And that is, I think is very, I know it's very intentional, but also I think it works really well because if someone doesn't feel comfortable sending that WhatsApp message to the entire group, they can go to the website and just contact MCN and say, hey, I really wanna know this Michelle person I know he's doing something great and I think it interacts with the arts that I'm doing here. Can I, can I connect with them? Um, so just putting that out there as well. You go ahead, Melanie. Definitely. And, you know, kind of like what we were saying, like, this is how, you know, Jenny was able to find um, Michelle actually, um, which connected a lot to my project. So this question is specifically, um, you know, for Michelle as well, were you like surprised to see, you know, people were working on the same kinds of projects um, across the, the world? Like, you know, we're very, working on very similar projects um, between Live and, you know, your project of life through arts. Um, so, you know, how, how did that shape your understanding of, of different cultures across the world? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, Michelle. Okay, uh, so this program actually, this project actually helped me uh, to connect with the world. Uh, I, had, I had also an opportunity to share, I had also an opportunity to share my experience with someone from, from Tanzania. Uh, we actually studied together in the same, uh, in the same school, so we couldn't, uh, couldn't do it physically so we had to do it online it, it really helped me and also uh the program also helped me and uh, it the program also helped me to get uh mentorship program so i i have someone also who have been helping me and direct me about my my ideas about my projects and it actually really helped me to connect with the world yeah. Amazing. Thank you for sharing. Bismarck, are you there? Do you want to try again to see if the signal is better? Yes, please. Can you hear me? Perfect. We can hear you. Yes. Hello? Yes, we can yes. hear you. Actually, I wasn't surprised. Yes, actually, I wasn't surprised to meet other fellows working on the same projects. But I rather 
was very happy to meet people globally working on the same project because it shows that uh, the world is now turned into a global village where our challenges are being shared among members and young leaders who are trying to bring help to the communities in which they live. And through that, I think through the fellowship, I was able to connect with other fellows working on the same project, some similar and others, not the same project, but we try to chip in other things that can make it was one thing leads to the other. And I believe that was just it. And I wasn't surprised and I was very happy meeting, meeting others that were working on the same project as I did. Thank you very much. Awesome, thank you. Um, and you know, this, just to wrap it up before we turn it over to questions from our audience. So if you have any questions you wanna ask the fellows, make sure to start thinking of them, putting them in the chat, um, and then, you know, we'll get to those. But just as a final thought, you know, what advice do you have for, for students um, who want to work on their own projects and who want to develop their own projects? You know, a lot of the times we think that to be able to apply for the Millennium Fellowship, we have to have a project completely figured out um, and that it has to be, you know, completely designed and elaborated and like professional level and all these things and that's simply not the case right you can apply with just an idea so that's how I applied um, for the class of 2019 I just had an idea of what I wanted to do I wanted to work on the issue of the school to prison pipeline in the United States specifically within Miami and when I started seeing um, you know that my community didn't really understand what the school to prison pipeline was or that it was even an issue to begin with um, so once that happened you know I did some research I started thinking I started thinking well how can I make this accessible this information that we want to present and that's how I came up with the concept for live and I applied again for the class of 2020 and you know continued to develop this project so I worked on it you know all over the summer and then once I was a fellow throughout the fall um, all those kinds of things um, but it was really you know a process it started with an idea and eventually it became something that you know now we host these different events and that we're able to do this so does anyone you know have any thoughts on that did anyone start with just an idea and you know continue to develop it Yes, definitely. I remember feeling so confused at first because I thought everyone had their own project already figured out and that I was not going to be able to do anything. Or also, um, I remember comparing myself a lot when starting projects, especially seeing on social media what other young women did about it. And yes, yeah, so I think my advice would be to start. That's it. Just start thinking, start dreaming, start thinking how you're going to figure things out, but just, yeah, focus on that little spark you have about wanting to make it, wanting to make a change and start <laughs> and apply because it really does um, give you an amazing opportunity, even for your project and for yourself as well, because you learn so many things about how to pursue leadership and how to be a good leader and how to impact others. And also, I remember um, this new focus that I had through the fellowship that was um, making sure that you impact others, not by numbers, but how much effort you put into your work. And I was someone that really um, focused on how many people attended my event or how many followers I had. And through this fellowship, I, yeah, it did change many, many things to me. And yeah, <laughs> thank you. Andrea, Alejandra, if either of you want to jump in with um, some thoughts on, you know, any advice for students? Yeah, I... Oh, you go ahead, sorry. Sure. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I would just say, like, don't be scared to apply. Like, there's something we say a lot in Mexico, the, the no, it's already there. So you're literally not losing anything by applying. It's just like Carla said, is your dream, is your thoughts, like, also don't be scared that your thoughts won't, or your ideas uh, won't be good enough, because there is always someone that's thinking the same 
um, the same thing as you. So I think that would be my main advice. Also, don't be scared to ask for help because sometimes, some, <clears throat> oh, sorry, <laughs> because sometimes on these things like activism and like that, uh, to get started, you, some people think you have to have all figure it out, even though you're barely starting and you're barely learning uh, how to do stuff. So really don't be scared to connect, don't be scared to ask for help and don't be scared to learn because that's why we are all here, right? So um, learning is how we get things done and well, yeah, that would be. I agree with Carla and Alejandra. I, my advice would be definitely to start a project that you truly believe in. Um, it doesn't really matter if it'll help 10 people, one person, or millions of people. Um, I would say that the Millennium Fellowship recruiters really see if a candidate is passionate about something or his or her project. So as long as you believe in it, they will definitely believe in you and give you the opportunity to create a social impact. Definitely, so I love all of those yeah. answers, you know, go, go ahead. Oh. Uh, for me, I would okay, also my, say, uh, uh, oh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> okay, my advice to a student that would like to start their project, I'll start by saying to scare a bed is not the best way of catching a bed. You should actually remove fear and have the mind that Failures will come, but success is so ultimate. So you should, you, should, you should try hard and always focus on what they actually want to achieve and it will help them. And go away with fear and go ahead and do what they want. Thank you. Yes, for me, I would say to, uh, is my my friend also said we need you need to start um people may neglect what you do uh me as a photographer it's always hard for me uh to get considered because i'm a photographer because i don't have that big uh title in the world but uh for me i i take it as uh something that can help other people there are so many people who can be uh better than me and when I see another person going uh, far, it's what inspire me to, to do something. So you need to find what you really believe in and to go for, for it, yeah. Thank you all so much for sharing those answers. I think, you know, it's definitely, everyone had kind of the common theme of, you know, believe in it. If it's something you're passionate, go for it and, you know, develop this idea and don't be afraid to take it elsewhere. I would also really stress collaboration. It's so important. Um, before I did this fellowship, like you may see me talking here and I look all cool, calm and collected, but I'm not, like I am such a shy person. <laughs> um, so to be able to do this, you know, it was really a, a really growing opportunity um, for me. and. It it really helped me step out of that shell and be able to, to talk to others and, you know, go up to people with, you know, the fancy titles and be like, hey, I'm working on this and I need your help and this is why you should help me. And so it's those kinds of things, um, you know, that you'll really get from it in addition to all of these, you know, international collaborations that really just helps you in your development as a whole to not be afraid to, you know, speak out and have the knowledge to speak out about the issues that you're passionate about. Um, so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Yeni um, to go over some of the application steps. I see in the chat a lot of the questions are related to the application. So, you know, hopefully this will take care of that. Um, and at the end, um, if the panelists could please stick around for a few minutes to take our group picture, that would be great. Thank you, Melanie. I just wanted to make sure uh, because I saw the questions coming in and the private messages coming in. So let's talk about the application and then we still want to hear your questions for the for the panelists as well. But really quickly, 2020 at a glance, uh, over a thousand fellows were working across the world on the Millennium Fellowship um, with a total of 80 campuses in 20 countries. Um, 
really driving change in their communities, which is really exciting. In terms of the actual application process, there are two rounds. The first one, and I love, was it you, Alejandra, or Car somebody said, just start. Whoever said that, that's awesome. A lot of my students, when they come to talk about the fellowship and they are on the fence and they're hesitant, they just feel overwhelmed by what if it's not good enough or I just, I don't have a, a full plan of what I'm gonna do. Just start, you're passionate about something. I think it was Michelle who said, if you believe in it, then just go for it. Um, the first round is very simple, actually, is demographic information and just explaining to them, like, why are you interested in the fellowship? If you pass that first round, then you get an invitation for the second portion of the application. And that one is requires a little bit of more details in terms of what kind of project you're proposing, uh, how does it connect to the sustainable development goals, um, what kind of leadership uh, positions have you or experiences you've had in the past and then it also requires an academic reference now when you think about the leadership question i can't emphasize this enough sometimes students think they have to have had some kind of i had to be the president before of the un women at fiu or i had to do it doesn't have to be the case there are many ways in which you show leadership and that could be within your family within your neighborhood within your community at work uh, in a classroom so you could use those examples if you haven't done something um like being a member of a board at, at an organization, that's okay. There are other ways in, in which you can explain how you've shown your leadership. And it's as much as it is about leadership, it's about passion. And they can really tell, these reviewers can tell when you're passionate about it, when you have the drive, when you are really committed to making a difference, then really your chances are so high of getting accepted, honestly. Something that I don't think it's here, but it's important for you to, to keep in mind is that fellows are selected as a cohort. So you can be a fantastic applicant. If you don't have enough of other students applying with you, your university won't get selected. So you need at least eight, ideally 20 people. Um, so from eight to 20, it's, it's usually the cohort size, but you need at least 15 people from your university applying so you have at least eight that can get selected. So sometimes it's not even about your application only, it's your application and the people around you as well that are putting the effort to, to submit something that is strong. And in terms of the, uh, the academic reference or the letter of reference, pick somebody who knows you well. Don't pick somebody because they have a fancy title or pick somebody who has seen you and who knows you as a person and as a student and they can attest to, to your commitment to, to these type of projects. Um, and then Mel, do you wanna talk about this? The, the sure. example of the, what you discuss while you're part of the fellowship? Definitely. So, you know, with the sessions, um, you have the option to either meet bi-weekly um, for two hours or weekly once a week. So we, um, because FIU is, as you all know, a very, you know, large university and everyone has so many different schedules, we are meeting every week. So we met for 12 weeks um, and we discussed so many different topics. So they're split up into different sessions. And some of the topics that we talked about were, you know, objectification and self-denial, how to set smart goals for your projects. What is community mapping and how can you build this network? How to craft your pitch to be able to, you know, explain to people what it is that you're doing in less than a minute and have them actually understand it. And, you know, also working on things to, to take steps to make these organizations and these projects sustainable. So, you know, how can you secure your donors? How can you grow these partnerships? So there's so many different topics that you cover and it ranges anywhere from your own personal leadership development to how to, you know, be able to establish these projects if they're just an idea. Thank you, Melanie. I think, uh, I think we did talk about the global webinars, right? We already mentioned those opportunities that- Yes, yeah, so you can- Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Matt. I was going to say, you can search on YouTube, the Millennium Campus Network, and you'll be able to find all of those different webinars. And, you know, you can listen to them, get an idea of what it is that they entail and what it is that you'll be able to do as a fellow. Oh, 
sorry, I should have clicked a much one more time, but this is an example. I think I actually attended this one that was with the United Nations speakers. Yeah, perfect. Um, and then, yes, this is our contact information as, um, as you know, most of you know, I, I do advisement and recruitment for this fellowship here at FIU, but I'm also happy to work with, with colleagues um, in other places. And, and we're actually done that. Our fellows have been supporting fellows at the University of Michigan to become a Millennium Campus um, Fellowship group as well. This is how you can get in touch with both me and with Melanie as well. This is our Instagram information to follow us on social media. And uh, I know I don't want Sherry to just call me because she is the official official host, but I think we have a few minutes, Sherry, uh, to open it up for questions. We do, we have at least three and um, I'd love to hear your questions. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, perhaps I'm gonna bring the, the group back really quickly. I'm gonna stop sharing and see if people have some questions about the fellowship in general or the experiences that were uh, shared here today. Anybody has questions? Or I don't know if anybody uh, typed some of them in the chat. Or comments. You can also have comments about what you heard. I think we, we heard a lot of inspiring thoughts. There were several who were wanting to know how to apply. And so you definitely addressed that question. Yay. Perfect. Yeah. And it's any undergrad student, as long as they will be around for fall 2021. So I think some of my graduating seniors were asking me, and unfortunately now it's not available uh, once you graduate it. I think there is a question. Yeah. How are you able to know that you found the topic for your research? It's, it's about identify. Charis, is this um, about I how do you identify the right topic? Yeah. Like, how do you, how do you just know? Like, I've done research uh, um, for different areas, mostly for like writing research or tutoring, because um, I'm a tutor at the Writing Center, but like I've never done a research um, like Andrea's or Carla's that involves a little more um, of like a little more of like a global aspect. So I, I wonder like, how did you guys like find that topic and then just know that that was a topic you wanted to work, like to, to research further on? So I'll start by saying a lot of the times you don't know, you start with like a very broad idea of, you know, this is what I want to address, right? So for me, like I mentioned, it was, I want to tackle the school to prison pipeline. Obviously I can't do that on my own, right? And I can't do that like, like just once. Um, so I started narrowing it down and I was like, what strengths do I have, you know, that can help this issue? And so for me, it's the arts, right? I'm very passionate about the arts, about creativity, about using that as a, as a medium of expression and as a, a medium of healing for people. Um, so I started thinking, you know, what are ways that we can implement these sorts of, you know, arts lectures, arts curriculums, all these different things to help drive this positive change in our community and, you know, in turn, you know, in our schools. Um, so I think as you go through the process as well, you kind of start gaining a better idea. And as, as you start exploring these different issues of what it is precisely that you want to tackle, right? So it might be that you start off with one thing. And as you go, you start narrowing it down little by little until you finally get to that specific topic that it is you want to cover. I believe this fellowship is only for undergrads. Is that correct? It is for undergrads. Um, somebody sent an interesting question because FIU has that four plus one. I don't know. I uh, Please email me that question so I can pass it on to MC and Teen and, and check for you. My email was shared before, but I'll share it in the chat again because that's a good question. I don't, I don't know if they will make an exception because it's the four plus one. Um, any other questions before we say goodbye and I return to the screen to share a reminder about the events coming up? Um, yes, I have a question. Can you hear me? Yes, Melody. It says that there's like some internet problem, so I'm just making sure. But, um, so you, it's, in, it's during the fall, correct? So, um, how much... Would the would you be working on the project solely during the meetings, the biweekly meetings, or is it also like you would you would meet 
and discuss the project that you're working on because I would love to apply, but I want to make sure that I'm putting in enough time to a project. Um, and yes, yeah, so I just want to know like maybe like time commitments that you would recommend uh, per week and things like that. Yeah, I see in the chat, Camila, one of our fellows, but you work as much as you want. And really that's, you know, that's the case. As much as you put into it is as much as you're going to get out of it. So you have your, you know, requirements that are the weekly, um, you know, meetings, you have the different conversation hours, um, the global town halls, um, all of those kinds of things. Um, but really how much you work on it is up to you. So how many events, if you're doing events you want to put out, if you're doing research, like it really is up to, you know, how much time you're able to dedicate. I would say sometimes Sometimes I worked on it for 10 hours a week. Sometimes I worked on it for five hours a week. It really depended on, you know, what I had coming up and what I was trying to accomplish. So that's kind of why in the process of the fellowship, you work on, you know, setting these smart goals and setting this path to progress for yourself so you can hold yourself accountable. And I'm sorry to hold everyone up. I have one more question, I promise. <laughs> um, so let's say I've already uh, spoke with Yeni about uh, something that I'm working on currently, but so for research purposes, let's say, so let's say I have a project that's um, already made or in uh, the process, like a research paper. So would being part of the fellowship be including like presenting at conferences and things like that? Would that be considered, you know, like part of like what the fellowship does in a sense, if that question makes any sense? Um. I don't know if I can, but I could jump into that. <laughs> and honestly, I think the project is just what you want to make it. I started trying to make videos and all and Zoom chats. And then I realized that was not the best. And I started doing what you're saying, like going to conferences related to what I'm doing, making one extra uh, course on peace formations. And it's like I developed it um, more towards me helping others, like doing other projects. But I... I had to change my project as I went. So I'm pretty sure any effort you're putting into your, your area and anything you're actually able to put in the report at the end will be viable for your opportunity, for your experience. Yeah, I just want to emphasize, you know, it's really about meeting the sustainable development goals. So if through your work, you're addressing the sustainable development goals to have impact in your community, um, that's really, you know, what it comes down to. So if your research is about, you know, something related to one of the sustainable development goals, you're researching a specific topic um, to be able to to address that, um, you know, so let's say I'm going to use like Alejandra's project as an example, like you're talking about women in sports, right, gender equality, if you go to present to a conference about that topic, you know, about how to, you know, the gender inequalities found in sports and things like that, then, you know, that's related to your project as well. Thank you, Mel. Melody, um, it just can be a fit. If you already finished the paper, if it's already done, then no. Uh, just going to a conference, I don't think would. Um, qualify you but if it's a work in progress you've done half of the research that's fine because you still have another half to do <laughs> and that's still a lot of work and i had fellows in the past particularly melanie in the 2019 cohort where fellows were doing the research that had already started and they're just continuing it and part of their goals that they set for themselves is how do i raise awareness about this topic i'm researching so i apply for conferences i I talk to Sherry and get invited to a Tuesday time round table. You know what I mean? You find avenues to amplify that work. Yeah. Um, I just want to be mindful of time. I think we, we can answer a few more questions, but before, let me just say uh, a quick thank you to everybody who joined because some people I know have to go. And I just want to share this screen really quickly one more time. So I want to make sure I honor what, what the usual host does. And it's just remind you next Tuesday, 3.30 p.m. via Zoom, uh, New York Times um, keynote lecture for all of us, talking about Miami and the front lines of climate change. So I think we should all be interested in attending that. And for my GLM students, I see a lot of you here today. Super excited to see you. Um, two points for this um, event. And then Sherry, remind me, this one is after the 20th, yeah, this one is March 9th, 
Our next actual regular time, Tuesday Times Roundtable is March 9th. Tell your friends, tell your family, join us on that day. We want to see you there. <laughs> awesome. Uh, thank you. Um, anything else? Anybody has any other questions? There's one related to the Global Learning Medallion and they can email you with specific questions about that. Um, we kind of want to make sure that our guests today have an opportunity to answer any last questions. Anything else? All right. If there are no further questions, thank you so much, um, you know, all of you for joining us and especially thank you to our panelists for joining us today. You know, sometimes the Zoom world has its advantages where we're able to do things like this and gather to learn from each other um, across the globe. So thank you all for joining us and we're so excited and so happy for you all to be here.